the Buccaneer certainly plays to the rough and rugged style of Drake ships, but does strapping two massive engines to a ship make it fun to fly? I'm Farrister, and in this video we'll explore just that as I review the Star Citizen ship, the Drake Buccaneer. Star Citizen is currently in alpha testing with the Buccaneer as one of the flyable ships. She's a single-seater fighter, described as an interceptor. For those who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll recognise the usual format for this video. I split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the 80% of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1. Ship Tour And walking around the exterior of the Buccaneer, it's very obvious just how large the two engines bolted onto each wing are. In line with most other fighters, entry into the cockpit of the Buccaneer is on the port or left side. This takes you up into the single person cockpit which is the only internal space in the Buccaneer. Part 2 – Combat Performance Your garden variety Buccaneer comes armed with a curious assortment of weapons. By default, they're all fixed. Beneath each wingtip is a size 1 weapon, a small yellow jacket GT-210. And then there's a size 3 Panther laser repeater on a pylon on the inside of each wing. That's four weapons. And finally, on the spine of the top of the Buccaneer is a huge size 4 Revenant ballistic repeater. So that's two size 1, two size 3, and one size 4 fixed weapon. All in all, that makes for a weird assortment of firepower, but also makes the Buccaneer curiously effective against all manner of different sized targets. The repeaters also complement the fixed mounts well, as you can opt out for generally accurate, rather than having to be pinpoint precise. But having the high firepower offering means that even some medium sized ships will have to think twice when being engaged, and prioritise the Buccaneer accordingly. All of that is helped by the handling, which we'll get into into more detail in part 3, but suffice to say the Buccaneer is a bit of a handful, but in a good way. Outside of the main armament, budding fighter racers are also provided with four size 2 missiles to further enhance the firepower on offer. Somewhat understandably, the two size 1 shield generators don't hold up in a sustained engagement, but then this is a ship designed to lean on being quick, especially in a straight line, rather than absorbing heavy punishment. During my time in the Buccaneer, I wasn't really engaged by hostile players, and for those who watch this channel regularly, you'll know it's not really my style to attack innocents. So if you use the Buccaneer for PvP, please share your thoughts in the comments on how she performs. Also, please submit yourself for cargo inspection. Part 3 – Handling and Visibility Starting with cockpit visibility, in keeping with the Drake style, there are quite a few struts that slightly obstruct your view from the pilot seat. That said, it's easy enough to see what you need to, whether that would be a target or an obstacle. And takeoff and landing in the Buccaneer is also fairly easy, supported by the excellent flight characteristics. And those excellent flight characteristics are largely due to those two huge engines on the wings. Not only do they provide a lot of forward momentum, but they also support with considerable reverse thrust, meaning the Buccaneer is an absolute pleasure to fly in traditional coupled flight modes. In a vacuum, the Buccaneer is absolutely in its element, using those engines to full effect, and it's honestly a really fun ship to fly. I can only describe it as feeling like how I'd imagine driving a muscle car to feel, and that's probably evidenced by the top speed at 1317 meters per second. Once you get planet side, with the stock coolers it is prone to overheat a little, and so performance starts to drop away. 
That said, at SCM type speeds, which are fairly high in the Buccaneer at around 200 meters a second, the handling is still really strong, without so much of the heating challenges. All in all, the Buccaneer is really fun to fly. From a quantum drive perspective, the Strock drive is slow, yes, but offers medium range and a short cooldown, which is great for quick hops. Probably replace it for longer journeys. Part 4 Operating Costs In line with other ships of this size, refueling, repairing, and rearming the Buccaneer is incredibly cheap. Like, I'd be surprised if you regularly got three figure bills, unless perhaps you're firing all of the missiles every time. That's offset somewhat by more limitation about your options for making money. Largely, that's down to running combat contracts. Thankfully, the Buccaneer excels at these, including the larger claim jumper missions, with the large size 4 Revenant repeater putting heavy firepower downrange against the sentries. Any kind of combat contract will net your profit in the Buccaneer, so whatever you feel like flying, really. Part 5 the verdict. Coming into the cockpit for the first time, I wasn't expecting to enjoy the Buccaneer. Drake ships really aren't my style, being a little too rough and rugged for my more refined tastes. But I've been completely surprised by it. Yes, it's rough and ready, the engines bolted onto the wings are way too big for this ship, but that makes it really fun to fly. It feels like it has too much power behind it, but unleashing that has a primal thrill to it. Moreover, it's an incredibly efficient killing machine, which is really what you want from a fighter type craft. And although the cockpit might not be to origin standards, even small things like the little green and red side lights illuminating the wingtip weapons just warm you to the buccaneer. So that brings us to the price. At $110, or 1.4 million Alpha UEC, the Buccaneer isn't the cheapest ship out there, nor is it the most expensive. The pledge price is a little steep for a player who is more interested in more rounded gameplay, but for a combat oriented player could be worth it. Remember, that's still a lot to pay for Star Citizen. But the 1.4 million UEC, that's genuinely a pretty fair price and potentially worth it for somebody who likes the Drake style of gameplay. If you found this review helpful, you may also be interested in my review of the Aegis Gladius fighter. Please also subscribe if you'd like to see future Star Citizen content. Outside of that, if you're looking for a group who plays Star Citizen regularly, I've included a link to my organisation in the video description. And thank you for watching.